man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, and he was crushed by our iniquities. And upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace, and by his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his land. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. And he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him with a portion with the many. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a picture of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. That is a picture of what Jesus did on the cross. When he hung there on the cross, he took in his body the sins of many transgressors. God crushed him. And the Bible says it pleased God to crush his son. And he was fully satisfied by pouring out his wrath on his son. And it wasn't just that he died a physical death. Many people think that Jesus hung there on the cross and so did the thieves and so did many other martyrs that died for their faith. It wasn't just his physical death. It was that God poured out all of his hatred for sin into Jesus, his own son. He poured out all of his hatred into his own son. Jesus became the unrighteousness of us so that we might become the righteousness of him. Would you repent and believe in that good news today? Don't walk away without making this decision. Will you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ turn from your sin and come to the cross, ladies and gentlemen? Because only God has the power to save. And there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. No other God has the power to save. You cannot save yourself. Only Jesus Christ can save you. And only Jesus Christ can make you clean and right with God. And only His blood will make you righteous. You have no righteousness in yourself. God says that your best deeds are like filthy tampons. And you try to lay those in front of God. And you say, God, look what I've done. Look at all these great things I've done. And He says He'll spit you out of His mouth. That's how disgusting He finds your wicked works. But the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that you can come to Jesus Christ and be reconciled to Him by the blood of Jesus. You can't do it yourself. Young men, please hear this. The Lord is speaking to you today. Be reconciled to God. You can't do it yourself. You can't do it. There's no other way to heaven. There's no other gospel that can save because no other gospel 
as any gospel is.